It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's Thursday evening, January 26, 2017. This is your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, gold, euro, and FDAX this evening. Crude oil is bullish and trading with a spike in range this evening, which tells us to look for buying opportunities at the low of the range using failures and traps tomorrow. The E-mini S&P is bearish, but after two runaway bull days this week, today's pullback will likely be considered a bull flag by most traders who have been patiently waiting for an opportunity to buy at a lower price tomorrow. Gold is bearish with a spike in channel tonight, which tells us to look for selling opportunities up at resistance levels overhead. The euro is bearish and trading right in the middle of a range this evening which tells us to look for selling opportunities up above the high of the range with a target back down at the lows tomorrow and of course the FDAX also bearish tonight but after two days of strong bull runs we know most traders will see this as a bull flag and be looking for buying opportunities going back to retest the high but we've had an incredible week here on the nightly newsletter we've had an incredible week in our trade with all of our students here at School of Trade we've got a Friday session coming up tomorrow and we're looking forward to having another great day with you guys tomorrow in our trade room don't forget though before we jump into our charts and take a look at the plan for tomorrow don't forget the only place to watch the full length version of this video is on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com if you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel it's only a small portion on the YouTube channel not to worry though there's a link in the description of that YouTube video follow that link and of course come join me on the blog for the full length version while you're here don't forget join the mailing list I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live follow me on social media I'm posting throughout the day charts and updates that you'll want to be aware of download those charts below tonight's video have all those charts ready for your trading session tomorrow I've got all the charts in tonight's video follow that link below the video on the blog and please don't forget you're gonna learn more with me in 90 minutes on this free pass than you will anywhere else on the interwebs grab your free pass in the upper right hand corner and come out and join me as a guest for a couple days in the trade room and don't forget if you're not a member here at School of Trade if you're brand new to the SOT community we get a great frequently asked questions page on our blog that'll give you the who what where when and why we're known as being the industry standard in futures trading strategies and professional education guys and gals what a great week you've had so far we're only as good as our next trade though let's get ready for tomorrow tomorrow's a Friday session the 27th day almost finish up with this year we're almost finished up with the first month of the year we got one more day next week before we jump into the month of February of course always an exciting time to be a trader the first few months of the year tomorrow's a Friday so whenever of course we have a Friday session we're always thinking early in early out my rule of thumb on a Friday is get to it before 11 a.m. on Friday mornings after 11 a.m. After 11 a.m., you start getting lower volume. And remember, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, right, traders take bigger risks. So risk taking goes up, volume goes down, and that is a recipe for disaster for new traders. So get to it early tomorrow in the London session, in the morning U.S. session, right, but be careful in the afternoon session in the U.S. right after 11 a.m. Eastern time. You're more than welcome to leave positions open tomorrow afternoon, but be careful entering into new positions right as the volume dries up. Looking at the news here, we've been waiting for this big news tomorrow morning. We've got GDP and durable goods. Those are going to be the two headline numbers here. We're going to see that GDP number, of course. The GDP numbers right now are the fourth quarter GDP right, of 2016. So a lot of traders will be watching this GDP number tomorrow to see how the end of the year right, finished up. And then, of course, place their bets right, and update their analysis going forward for 2017. So big news tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. That should get us going here. Nothing really else else to worry about here tomorrow consumer sentiment the rig count I'm not gonna worry about much of that but tomorrow morning though 8 30 a.m. right we definitely want to be uh, keeping our eyes on the charts tomorrow because we will be seeing some added volatility for that GDP report don't forget we'll be with all of our students tomorrow morning in our trade room I look forward to trading with you guys we'll be looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow morning opening up at 8 o'clock Eastern time let's jump in we got crude S&P gold euro FDAX we'll cover them all here tonight I appreciate you guys sticking around with me here this evening crude is bullish and trading with a spike in range this evening you could also call it a spike in triangle this tells us to look for buying opportunities at the low of the range using failures and traps tomorrow if price pushes higher we need to avoid buying into the highs and wait for proof of a successful breakout pullback before we start buying pullbacks above to new highs now sellers on the other hand need to see strength to the downside and a successful breakout pullback below the battle zone if they want to take control and run this price back to today 
day's low. As you can see here today, the day starts off this morning here, a little bit of a spike in range. Boy, we had a great session today in our trade room. Seeing that spike up and that range down, we used the pendulum swing right to anticipate a strong move higher wasn't expected to see all of this of course right but we definitely saw the market trap low right back up and turn into a very very strong right bull day we had a bull channel come up a break and retest and then of course a failed double top here lower high creates that falling resistance coming down that falling resistance of course may develop into a bear channel right but as of this point though it looks like we've got a higher low lower high and it looks like we have ourselves moving into a triangle strong move up into a triangle triangles are basically trading ranges mark the highs mark the lows and our focus now is to follow the directional bias going into that range look to pick off opportunities here buying the low of that range and again if we do get some strength going through for a breakout pullback the key though right now is to stay away from the middle focus on buying low get that market down below right get below that range failures and traps right to buy that market back up as it goes higher this is where we really got to stay patient and make sure we do see a real strong break higher here you know imagine now the moving average you want to get that moving average clearing up above that high that's going to be the most important clue the key when we go back to the high right if, if we end up going back to the high back to the high that's going to be the objective right so as the market you know assume here as the market pulls back buyers enter the market here we're looking for the buy back up right the objective the target is to get back to the high of that range then we take a timeout and we wait and see what happens sometimes we break through it and keep going that breakout needs to be strong gonna see some real strength going through that high definitely may happen right we get $55 a barrel just waiting overhead to be tested tomorrow real strong bull day today who knows if they can't break through that high though then we want to keep picking off those lows right keep buying low keep buying low the key is with this trading range again you can call it a triangle right I'll call it a range here I want to be buying that dip right buying low now of course with that spike in range right we get a little swing level here reversal line low of that range this creates the battle zone and basically this is where we're going to be looking for right the buyers and sellers to compete and usually because the bullish trend going into the range usually the buyers will win that battle so one thing to keep in mind here would be a short-term pullback right failure and back up right if it happens to give us a little bit larger pullback right if we pull back a little bit larger now right if we get a sellers holding the pullback then of course look for that breakout pull back and go right looking for that move as it makes its turn remember it all depends on how deep that pullback is if it's a real deep pullback the sellers will take short-term control if they can hold the pullback here right and then it becomes a bear market we want to wait patiently for the price to make the turn right and then buy it as the price goes back up on the on the flip side obviously if the sellers can get below this battle zone in other words right if we can hold a pullback and get through it on some strength then we can start looking right at getting some reliable selling opportunities back below that battle zone 53 31. just be aware though a lot of bulls right that either couldn't participate right or never get a deep pullback on the move higher they're probably going to be waiting somewhere down here right so be careful sellers trying to sell into that battle zone the goal right now is get it down so we can sell it back up right if it gets back to that high be careful buying into the high right just keep trying to pick off those lows right and buy the dips buy the dips and of course if it does run right we want to see some strength up through that high it's got to be real strong here to the downside the key word if you want to be a seller right now is is strength tomorrow you got to give the buyers the benefit of the doubt until we see at least a strong and successful breakout pullback below that battle zone tomorrow for the bears right we got one today today was a good example right we had that we had a bear move going into today's session right and when we saw this real strong push higher here today there was no doubt about it that this trend had fully reversed and we of course became buyers very good plan for tomorrow look forward to seeing you guys 
in the trade room with us as we execute the strategy tomorrow with all of our advanced members. How about the S&P? S&P is bearish, but after the last two runaway bull days, today's pullback will likely be considered a bull flag by most traders who have been patiently waiting for an opportunity to buy at a lower price. The key to trading a flag is to look for failures and traps at the highs and the lows of that channel. As price tries to go higher, we want to resist the temptation to buy high and look for a seller failure or a bear trap to buy low with a target going back to the high. Now, if price does go lower, then we start looking for seller failures at that rising support trend line, right, or at the low of that channel or at the measured move, right? If the price goes lower, we're looking for failures so we can buy at support. Now, one of the biggest clues on this chart is the way price appears to be stuck on that moving average, telling us that buyers aren't giving it any room right on each move lower, and it won't be until we can get some separation below the moving average right until we're able to start selling tomorrow. This is a really, really good example of what I talked about last night right on the moving average. Uh, right, right now we have you know a couple days here, and this also will go for the FDAX as well. Right now we have a few days, a few consecutive days here of real strong bullishness, and what that's happening now is is now we're seeing this market, let's do this. We're seeing, a, we, we've got a couple days of real strong bullishness going higher, right? Very shallow pullbacks as we've gone. And then now we're starting to see this grind lower, right? And this grind lower, the moving average is really important because it gets, you know, it's almost like stuck right to that moving average as it comes down. This is going to be seen now as a flag. Basically, the buyers haven't been able to really get a nice, juicy buying opportunity over the past few days. And so as this price pulls back, we assume that buyers are scaling into this as it's pulling back. And as the buyers enter, as it pulls back, that's why you're not getting any separation right away from that moving average. Now, there are really two places you want to be looking for opportunities. One will be at the low of that channel. The other will be above the high of that channel. And of course, trying to make the move back up to retest the high. The objective right now is to retest the high. You will see people that will say, no, we're going for a measured move here, right? But that's a pretty lofty, that's a pretty lofty goal, right? A, B equals C, D. It's a pretty lofty goal for, right, for tomorrow's session. So as of right now, unless we see it blow right through those highs, I'm looking for a retest, right, of that high of day. So we know right now the two main things you want to keep in mind right now are going to be watching the separation from the moving average and then keeping an eye on either the bottom or the top of that of that bear channel coming down. Let's go back to the chart now. If I zoom out, obviously you can see we've had no problem going higher over the past few days. And now here comes that bear channel, right, coming down overhead. On top of that bear channel, we have the measured move. That measured move creates a very nice area of support down around that 89 even area. And we have this rising support trend line, which may just end up coming into play here in tomorrow's session. At the same time, if price runs higher, we have our no trade zone. I just don't want to buy high, right? I want to buy low. And if price goes lower, it'll be easy to buy low. If price goes higher though, then we'll have to get a little bit creative, right? To try to get in at a lower price. Now, in all reality, that the best trades on flags are usually going to come in the form of a failure. So price goes down, seller failure, and we can buy low. That's the most aggressive. It's a bear market right now and trying to buy a seller failure in a bear market, as I've always told you, right, is, is not going to be the most reliable trade you can take, right? In a bear market, really what you want to be doing is selling. So being able to, to buy that measured move, you know, and again, we're looking to buy the low of that channel. This is where the aggressive stuff comes in, right? The measured move is acting as support. The trend line's acting as support. So, you know, one scenario is, is we run down, we bounce off the measured move, right? The moving average comes over. Sellers try to sell it. We see a failure. And again, this is where the aggressive buyers right, will be getting in. Same thing here, right? We go down, down to the low of the channel, right? Moving average comes over. Sellers try to sell it, right? They fail. And we can buy into the stops, right, of those bears. Again, those examples buying at the measured move, buying at the low of the channel, 
You're going to want to look at for failures, seller failure. And again, it's in a bear market, so it's going to be a little bit lower reliability. That's why I said it's the more aggressive way to do it. The other scenario, of course, is if price goes up. Now, if price goes higher, we get plenty of...